Today I'm going to show you a trick with your airbrush to make sure that your shading isn't too dark and that it's even. That's coming up. Hello everyone, my name is Daniel Reach. This is Weaver Leather Supply, and this right here is one of the most common questions I get in regards to using the airbrush, and that is, how do I use it to shade? It's a fantastic tool for shading things like wallets and belts and journal covers and a whole lot of other stuff. Well, today, we're gonna be taking a look at the ornaments that we did in the last video, and we're gonna use the airbrush to shade those and give it a little bit more of a spherical look. Now, just full disclosure, we're not gonna create a full spherical illusion. It's just to give the suggestion of that. We're going to start with three of the ornaments from the kit that I didn't use last time. Now these are perfect because you can really see what the paint is doing. There's no, there's no other paint scheme in there to kind of muddle what we're seeing. It's very easy to see what's going on. You also notice the hash marks that I put at the kind of 11 o'clock mark and the one o'clock mark. You don't have to do that. That's just to give you a real clear idea of where I'm starting and where I'm finishing. Now I'm gonna be going from 11 o'clock around to one o'clock, but if it's more comfortable for you to go one o'clock to 11 o'clock or something like that, you can absolutely do that. One of the other things that I'll mention is that you don't necessarily need to go all the way around the ornament in one solid pass. Now it's great if you can do that, but you'll notice I don't even do it. I've been airbrushing for 25 years, actually a little more than that, and I'm not even gonna do that. One of the advantages to doing shorter strokes here is that it's gonna force you to work on your blending a little bit. So if you can go all the way around in one, one pass, great. If you can't, that's okay too. Don't get frustrated with yourself. Just use it as a chance to work on your you're blending a little bit. So tip number one is to start off project. And what I mean by that is we're going to start spraying the paint onto the paper next to the project, not directly on the project. Now this is going to do a couple of things for us. Number one, it's going to make sure that there's nothing wrong with the airbrush. If it's going to spit or sputter or something like that, we want it to do it on the paper, not on the project. Number two, it's going to start that fade as slowly as possible, right? Building a fade up is all about doing it gradually, not all at once. So we're going to make multiple passes on this. And by starting off project and using the overspray to start that coloring process, that's what we want. That's going to give us the most gradual fade into the, the fade that we're trying to create. And of course, as always, we're gonna make sure that we're exercising proper trigger control. If you need a refresher on that, that's not a problem. We just did a video a couple of weeks ago. We'll put a link in the description for that. Um, it gives you a good basic understanding of what proper trigger control looks like. So it's not in depth by any stretch of the imagination, but it's a good foundation. So if you need a refresher on what proper trigger control looks like, go back and watch that. Essentially, your air needs to stay on the whole time and it's your paint that toggles on and off at the appropriate times. Again, this is assuming that you're using a dual action and not a single action airbrush. And a quick reminder, if you're enjoying the videos and you're finding the series helpful, it would help us out a lot if you'd give us a thumbs up. So the way we're going to create the fade is over multiple passes. So what we're going to do is we're going to start on the paper on the outside and we're going to work our way in. We're not going all the way to the center, right? Once we take it in as far as we want to go, we're going to move back out to the paper and then we're going to go in about 75% of what we did last time. Then we're going to move back out and we're going to go in about 50% and then 25%. And what that's going to do is it's going to create that gradation, that variation that we're looking for from dark to light. Now that we understand the mechanics of how to create a fade, let's jump over to the ornaments and I'll just show you how it works. Now, one thing I'll point out is that I'm using blue because it works really well for all three of these ornaments. But if you're working on a belt or a wallet or a journal cover or something like that, you're probably gonna wanna use black or brown.
Well, that's it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. And for now, go make something amazing. <laughs>